So my name is Priscilla Kuma, a registered nurse, bachelor's of science in medicine. I come from Ghana. I'm a US citizen. I live in New York State. I create content for nurse, nurses and uh, lifestyle. I had my childhood in Nigeria, as I always say, and um, I finished my education in Ghana. My secondary school mates and my GSS mates are going to be angry with me because they said that I've never said anything about my GSS. So let me just mention it today so they leave me alone. So I went to Kabori School Complex. It's a very good school in Volta Region Hall. Uh, from Kabori School Complex, I went to Ola Girls in the same Volta Region Hall of Ghana. Then from Ola Girls, I went to University of Ghana where I studied uh, nursing. I've been a nurse for close to 12 years now. Yes, I don't look my age, but yeah, I've been a nurse for close to 12 years now. I did my national service or rotation in um, La General Hospital. Then I went to 37 Military Hospital. I, I worked there for over five years. Then I finally came to the US. So how did I come to the US? I came to the US through my husband. So I came on a spousal visa. It's called CR1. Uh, it was a whole process, but anyway, I made it here. So everything about my nursing career in the US, I did it from the US. I entered the U.S. before I started my application and everything to start working in the U.S. And um, it's pretty much the same process. The only difference is that I took the NCLEX, which is a nursing licensure. I took that in the U.S. But you, who is outside the U.S., who take your licensure um, outside the U.S. If you are in Africa, you take it in South Africa. If you are in um, U.K., you take it in U.K. If you are in Asia, you can take it in Philippines. You can take it in India. So... I, as I said, I didn't have any help during the process, so it took me a, a longer time to get everything together. It took me about two years to get in. Together, and uh, I've been helping people, friends, family, and I'm just one person. I can't help with everybody, so I decided to put a team aside. So I have my teammates here. They're going to introduce themselves and tell you all about their profile. So... I have a team. I have two of my team members in here. Um, and they're going to introduce themselves. We are US RN, RN Pathway Consult. It's a long name. It's a uh, mouthful. So you can just call us UPC for short. UPC, US RN Pathway Consult. Let me state categorically and emphatically that we are not a visa processing company. Neither are we a recruitment agency. I would say the second time. Let me state that we are not a visa processing company and we are not an agency. We are processing consult. We help you with your paperwork to be able to take NCLEX and we link it to recruiters and we wash our hands off it. We show you fill this form like this. Use this ink, color, blue ink or blue pen or whatever. Submit this, choose this state because this state is better for you. We show you the certificates you have to use if you have 10 certificates. We just show you where which one to apply for and how. We just show you how we, we literally hold your hands, help walk you through the process to becoming an iron in the US. People reach out to me and help me find a job. This does that. I do not do that. I only show you the states to choose and how to work in the US. Okay, so over to you, Dixon. Kindly introduce yourself. You are not muted. That's why I see somebody else there. Can you introduce yourself to the team members? to those watching us from all over. And before I forget, uh, welcome to everybody from Nigeria. I know a lot of you. Good morning, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dixon Oseboa, an associate um, consultant for USRN Pathway Consult. I'm a Ghanaian and work with um, Chad, Christian Health Association of Ghana. Um, I have my master's in development studies and also currently doubles as a research consultant. And I'm happy to be helping you through, through this journey. Thank you. So my name is Francis and I've been working as a the same period as first lab meet from the university and I'll be helping you with all your paperwork as you sign up for our program. Put your questions in the chat box and I'll tell you briefly about what we do and our process and the, how much it entails. 
I see Kola Wale from Nigeria. Thanks for coming in. Baoni. Um, okay, so USRN Pathway Consult, UPC. Basically, what do we do? We help you literally hold your hands through the process. I've been through the process. Many people have done it. The US process is very lengthy. It's very expensive. It's, um, it's a headache, literally. Uh, it takes so long. And if you do not know the right forms to fill, the right states to choose, um, or the right evaluation company to use, you are going to delay yourself a lot of years. As I said, mine took me close to two years before I figured it out. And I was living in the US and working as a nursing assistant. And it was very, very frustrating knowing that you're a nurse, but you have to do a minimum wage job for like $12, $13 an hour. That was terrible. But that, that urged me to like study hard and get out of the hospital, like get my RN. So yeah, so can you share this link with people, let them join so that we get this going. So then I found the need that uh, I need to extend this service since I've been able to figure the way out. And, uh, and this is how UPC came to be, USRM Pathway Consult. And our terms, we say that uh, you have to be a diploma or a degree holder, bachelor's, okay? You have to be a general nurse in Ghana, they say RGN. You have to be a midwife. You have to be a psychiatry nurse because now I'm sure most of you saw the video, the psychiatry nurses in the US who are working. There are midwives in the US who are working. I'm working really hard to get a midwife to come share her story. She doesn't want to be on the channel, but we are still working on it. So when she finally agrees, I will definitely bring her here. There's another guy I'm working on. So whoever works, I'll definitely bring you, bring the person here as evidence. So psychiatry nurses are working. My reputation is at stake. So I don't say anything I don't know about. I wouldn't lie to you. Um, I wouldn't defraud anybody. My license is at stake. New York State will find me and take my nursing license from me. So I wouldn't take your money and run away. Bear in mind, I was on YouTube for two years before this thing came up. So I didn't come up to just uh, lie to anybody. So midwives, you can work in the US. Psychiatry nurses, you can work in the US. And general nurses. So you have to have an active thing. You have to have gone to a nursing school, graduated, did your national service or whatever and have a PIN and be called a registered nurse. You should have the PIN number. Even if it's expired, you can renew it, but you should have completed a, a nursing program, be it two years, three years, four years, before you can roll with, enroll with us. So people say, I'm doing national service. I'm four months into it. The process takes long. It can take between 10 months to three years or even four years. So if you are four months into your national service, you can start the process with us. But the problem will be that you do not have an active PIN. In filling some of the forms, we need your PIN number to progress. But we can still talk to you and see how we can work with you. Yes. And if you finish your national service or rotation, and for those watching from outside Ghana, when uh, somebody goes to a nursing, goes to tertiary and they are done, they do one year. Nigeria, you call it NYSC. Okay, in the Ghana, we call it national service. So after the, your education, you do the my Nigerian accent just came out. You do the uh, national service or NYSC, then you get your PIN number as a registered nurse, then you start working. Yes, so if you are doing a national service, you can enroll with us, then we'd find a way to figure it out. Some people say, I have all the certificates. I have a um, NAC, HSC, a health assistant, and I went and did degree nursing, blah, blah, blah. We, if you have a diploma in nursing, we'll use that diploma. If you have an RGN, diploma in general nursing, or maybe if we will use that. So we have to figure out which certificate works for you. Yes. And um, if you did BSN nursing, okay, please keep putting the questions in the box. I've seen questions popping up. I'm about to read all of them very soon. And how do you find us? We are a virtual office. We are a virtual office. Uh, the world has moved so far and everything is online. But if you want to see us physically, if you're in the US, you can drive to my house in New York State and see me. If you want to see if you're in Ghana, and you want to see my team members, you can drive to Accra and you see Dixon or Francis, they are on here. Before you joined in, they had already introduced themselves. So, and if you want them to come to you in UDS, you can buy their ticket, they'll take a good vacation. They love vacation, they love to have fun. So, yes. So we have a virtual office, everything is online. You'll be filling the forms, uploading the forms online. You don't need to necessarily see us. What are our attempts? You pay $300. 
I haven't checked the exchange rate today, but as of the last time I checked the exchange rate, it was like one, one dollar is almost like eight CDs or more. So if you are paying today, we'll give you the exchange rate for today. That is what you used to pay. So our total service charge is $300. But before you start with us, you pay $50 and it's non-refundable. If you back out, we'll not give you that $50 back. The last time I checked that $50, it cost 400 CDs. I haven't converted to Naira. I'm sorry for my Naira folks. So you pay $50. When you decide, oh, these people are convincing. I want to work in America. I want to go with them. Then the first thing you want to call the 050 number that is on our flyer. Call that number. The person who's going to pick up is called Dixon or Sayeboa. If he's not Dixon, just do not talk to the person. And when you call Dixon, if you've been following my channel, when you call Dixon, you will know who you're speaking to because the voice will sound familiar. He's been on my channel multiple times. So call Dixon and say, I'm ready to enroll. Dixon will redirect you back to me. And I would also walk you through the whole process and see whether you are okay with the terms. If you are okay with the terms, we'll give you an, a mobile number, Vodafone Cash, 050 number. You send the money via that mobile money service. And send me a screenshot saying you have paid this amount. And by that time, Dixon will already tell me that you have paid. And that's like 400 cities. That is non-refundable. And uh, for those joining in, I'm just telling you about the services we render. This is gonna be on YouTube too for those who are not able to make it today. See, so you pay the $50 non-refundable. Then we send you our first form. Our very first form is a screening form. It's a Google form you fill saying your name, your email, phone number, and all that. Then we know what type of nurse you are because there are so many messages they can't remember you. So when you fill the screening form, if you're a midwife, then the next step will be do, creating an account for you with E-R-E-S. If you are um, a general nurse, the process will be creating a CGFNS account for you. What is CGFNS account? Okay, let me roll it back. I think I jumped a, a little bit. How do you become a nurse in the U.S.? You become a nurse in the U.S. by evaluating your credentials first. Because you schooled outside the U.S., you have to evaluate your credentials. If you even live in U.K. and you schooled in Nigeria, you still have to go back and get your documents from Nigeria. The very first place you entered nursing school, the country you used for your nursing school. Whether you live in Afghanistan, you need to go back to that country, Kenya, Tanzania, Namibia. The nursing school over there, that's where you start from. So you decide that, oh, I want to live in New York State. You go to New York State Board of Nursing, you see the requirements for people who schooled outside the US. There's a column for foreign educated nurses. So you see the requirements. Then they will say that use CGFNS or ERES or other types to evaluate your credentials. So the first thing is deciding the states you want to go to. And to figure out that state, there are 50 states in America and every state is like a country on its own. They have all their rules and regulations. So if you decide that you're choosing New York State, you don't just choose a state because your brother lives there, your dad lives there, your boyfriend lives there. The requirements for a foreign educated nurse might be very terrible. A state like Minnesota will mess you up big time. Minnesota is very extreme. They will let you go back to do refresher course. They will let you go back and do Kaplan and review classes before you even start if you left school 10 years ago. So you don't just choose any state, choose a state that favors somebody who doesn't live in the US. Some states want social security number, some want a um, house address, you don't live in US. So we know the states that work for you and we will know where to guide you. Then there's something called compact states. You have the chance of going to other 34 states. So you can use Texas for your paperwork, but that doesn't necessarily mean you want to go and live in Texas. Yeah. So you choose a state, we want you to choose a state from the ones that are part of the compass state, NLC. States, they, you see the requirements, then you go and create a CGFNS account or an ERES account. If you're a midwife, if you're a secretary nurse and you go and create a CGFNS account, they will say your education is not comparable to the American education. If you create a CGFNS account, CGFNS stands for Commission for Graduate Foreign Trained Nurses, something like that. You pay $390, your money will she, your, your money will she, and what's the other one? 
your money go burn. So don't even worry about creating an account with CGFNS if you did all those specialties in Africa. And ERES is a little bit flexible. So your best bet is going with ERES and it's more expensive. ERES account is $480. So when you create that ERES account, you pay $480, then you roll. So we do all this for you. You tell us, you pay $50, we give you a screening form. We create ERES for you if you're a midwife or psychiatry nurse. If you are a general nurse, we create CGFNS for you. Then they release the forms to us. The forms have your names imprinted because remember you created a profile. So your name, your email is going to be on the form when you print and it comes out from the printer. So you cannot go and do a photocopy of that form and give it to your friend. Yes, it has barcode and it has numbers. So you cannot skip paying that $480 or paying that $390 for CGFNS. You take that, sorry, it already comes in printed, so you don't fill it. My time, we had to fill it with ink. But as I said, it comes already on it. You take one of the forms to where you had your nursing school. Then you take one of the forms to the nursing council of your country. In Ghana, the whole of Ghana, we have one nursing council, NMC Ghana. I don't know how many you have in Nigeria, but the nursing council, the overall one will endorse it for you. So you take one to your school and take one to your nursing council. The problem comes in when you work on as, as an individual. You go to the office, boss say, you go to your school and you give it to the tutor. The tutor is clueless. The tutor doesn't know where to fill. He's gone for a funeral, he's gone for a wedding and whatever. So he's not, he's not there to accept, to, to, do, to endorse the form for you. Yeah, so we will take the form to your school when you live in Ghana. Even if you are in UDS, Tamale, wherever, we'll take the form to your school. We'll find a way to get there. So you will not pay that $300 because from Accra to Tamale, the plane tickets alone, and I'm not going to be on the road for 12 hours to just get a form and call. Standing meet yourself before you enter. Standing meet yourself before. Thank you very much, Professor Shade. Okay. So, wherever you are in Ghana, or if it, if you, you school outside, you live in Tamale, you live in Bagos, you live in uh, outside, go somewhere, you don't want to come to Accra, we can do that around for you at a fee. That's why when you see the writing, it says $300, terms and conditions apply. If you cannot get the forms filled out, we'll do all the errands for you and yours will be more than $300 for the transportation and the risk on the road and all that. Yes. So for somebody who is outside Ghana, you're in Nigeria, you want us to do it for you. Tanzania, Kenya, you want us to do it for you. We will do all these things for you online. The only part you need to play is to make sure that you, get, you go to your nursing school in your country and get, a, and get your certificates and, and transcripts and things to us. You just upload to us and we will figure out how to go about it. Yes. And we fill the form for you. Your school fills the form and mails the form back to CGFNS or ERES. You will not hand deliver it. You are not allowed to see the form or even touch it. Your school will place a seal on the envelope and mail it to America. They will mail it to CGFNS or mail it to ERES at a fee. They use FedEx or DHL. And remember you created an online profile. That is how you'll be tracking all your documents and see what stage your documents have reached. So when your school mails it, when they get it, they will say, we've received your document. It will move to processing phase. When you call CGFNS, trust me, you will be on the line for two hours. And when they finally get to you, you talk to an answering machine. Nobody calls CGFNS unless you are jobless and you're you at home all day. They wouldn't pick. They have a place on their screen called contact us. So you go to the contact us box, then you type your thing, I think it looks yellow. Then you type your question, then you send, then they get back to you several days later. Or oh, CGFNS has a virtual help for $25. You pay $25, you wait in line, you choose a date, and then they attend to you. When they get your reports, then when they get your documents back, then they generate a report. Then they say your education is comparable to the one in the US. The video I rolled out yesterday about the psychiatry nurse, it says even if they say it's not comparable, go to your board of nursing and he advised people to use Virginia board of nursing. Virginia's decision, the Virginia's board of nursing decision will supersede the decision of that of the CGFNS. So Virginia states will allow you to take the board even though CGFNS says no. 
But on the safer side, just go with ARES. This thing, you can't figure it out. We know how to figure it out for you. Yes. So how fast does it take? If everything goes for well, your school and does everything, at least maximum 12 weeks, you should have your CES report, your evaluation done. Then the state that you registered with, they would look at that report and give you something called ATT, authorization to test. And with that authorization to test, you go to Pearson VUE and look for a date and register and take NCLEX in South Africa, NCLEX in America, NCLEX in UK, India, Mexico, wherever. So this is basically what we do for you. I can say it, but you can never do it by yourself. That is why we have come to serve the whole of Africa. There's nothing like this ever done in Africa. We are the first to start it. And I'm glad that it's coming from Ghana. No shade to my Nigerian brothers. I'm one of you. I spent 10 years of my life in Nigeria, as I always say. So this is it. The question chances for the degree public nurses and what are the roles? Thank you. So public health nurses, I'm still looking for a way. I like to see a human being that has done it. Then I can tell you what they did. So I haven't found anything for public health nurses yet. Nutritionists, there's a good news coming for you. Pennsylvania is taking nutritionists now, but you have to have a degree. If you're a nutritionist or dietetics, you have to have four-year degree. Pennsylvania is taking you. You can check out Pennsylvania um, website for nutritionists. Please, I would like to know the process a public health nurse or a community health nurse needs to follow. That is what I said. I'm still looking for a pathway for community health nurses and, and um, public health nurses. Please, is BC certificates a must for CGFNS? BC is not a must, but Dixon will come and answer all these questions in a second. Please, can RCNs apply for nursing jobs in the state? Registered community nurse, and oh my God, I see my community fellows in here a lot. I'm still working so hard to find a pathway for you. Please, when does IELTS come in the process? You need IELTS for visa screen certificate. Not all the states require IELTS. You only need it for your immigration purpose, the visa screen certificate. That is something you need for your to enter the US. Other than that, some states don't take it. And they wave it for some people in South Africa. They are waving it, waving it for some countries in Africa. So we are hoping that one day we get it waved for us. But it's a way to work around it. But it's, we would have to figure it out when you come to the consult. So our email, USRN Pathway Consult. You can email us when you don't have WhatsApp and try and join our Telegram group. So Dixon, I've spoken a lot. I need to drink some water. Please take over. You're the host now. So, uh, reading the questions for me so that I'll provide responses to that. But uh, quick on the, the community health nurses. So we are still trying to figure it out. But uh, right now, the avenue that we have is that you can do a pre evaluation. So with ERES, they are able to do a pre-evaluation for you. So you just have to submit your transcript and your certificate and just give you a fair idea whether it will be compatible to that of the US system. But of course, this uh, pre-evaluation report will be unofficial. So unofficial means that you are not going to verify your, your transcript from your school they are not going to verify your certificate and they are not going to verify your license from your nursing midwifery council. All that is to give you an idea of how the actual one will be. So for community health nurses, um, of course, you, technically you are not bedside nurses, but of course, looking at some of your transcripts, the courses that you did, it can give you a fair idea that uh, in some in some way it can be comparable to that of the the US system but the only agency that can you know give us this report is the evaluation the credential agencies that's EIES and uh, CGFNS so for now the route is you can approach us and we can help you to do the pre evaluation credential reports uh, boss. Yeah, there, there's a question, but it's a bit. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you, uh, no Priscilla, my sister uh, from Nigeria, the partial sister from Nigeria. You ran away from our country. I know. So you are not annoyed anyway. Uh, sorry, you are doing a great job. Yeah, I have a question, but it, it's a bit 
uh, is, a, is a bit of deviation from you know what you are what you are saying. Now these are. Uh, it's all about getting prepared, you know, for the uh, the endless journey. All these you are doing, uh, this evaluation process. Um, now, it, like Africa, if not for recently, that we now have South Africa, and uh, I think only South Africa that actually that, that actually has a sensor whereby one can have this exam done. I know it takes a whole lot of uh, process. The journey is very fast. Sometimes you don't get visa on time to go to South Africa, so you still want to go to this Asia country to have it done. So, like this part of the country is even about you know, the flight to that country that you are going to have your exam that even got, you know, a whole lot of uh, money. But please, what is your organization doing, you know, as regards the preparation for the exam itself so that all this whole process does not, you know, be in vain? Is there any, uh, 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 is, there an, is there any online class that you are aware of or that you are, you, you, you can, you are boast of that one can hook up to and have, you know, a, a better preparation so that when you have when one do this endless exam, you know one can at a sitting one can you know know that is is he, he, done and dusted. So that's just my question. Uh, yeah, so that's a very uh, good question. So my brother, in in response to your your question, uh, yes, uh, USRN Pathway Consult also. So it's a it's a full package that we are offering to our brothers and sisters and our clients, of course. So uh, as part of the program that we are doing, we also organize an NCLEX review class, an NCLEX review class for clients who subscribe to our program. So within a week, um, they have three days to uh, attend a virtual class. We also subscribe them with a Q-Bank with over 2,000 questions that they can practice. And as part of it, every week we do what we call ankle stimulation exams. Ankle stimulation exam. So the ankle stimulation exams is to achieve two things. One, to build the confidence level of our students, of course, our nurses, and also to you know expose them to a real life settings of how the ankle will look like. So it's a, of course, it's a computer-based test. And you are to you have five hours at your disposal to answer about uh, 145 questions, and we will expose. It's very hard, and um, this and that. But people have taken it. At least we don't know anybody. <laughs> you know me. I have taken it. It involves a lot of critical think thinking. You need to be able to think fast because all the answers are right. And you have to take the best answer and prioritize. People have done it, so you can do it too. And um, I, people ask, how do you link us up to the jobs? There are two options, okay? You can decide to do all this by yourself as an individual, or you can enroll with an agency to do it for you. They all have their pros and cons. That's a question I always get. If you are enrolling with an agency, you are bonded to them. They bring you to the US, they pay part of your process so you get to the US and you are bonded to them. And because you are bonded to them, whatever terms they give you, you have to take it like that. But when you do it yourself, that is the one that I, we call self-sponsorship. You pay for the whole process by yourself. You pay everything. The good thing is that you don't need a whole bulk of money to start. If you choose a state, and you pay for the state board of nursing $140. You can go and sleep for four years and come back and register with CGFNS whenever you can afford it, $390. If you get the forms and you go to your school and your school says they are taking 10,000 naira, 10,000 shillings, uh, 1,000 CDs, and you don't have that, you can take the form home and so you save money and go and go and go back to the school. The same, you go to an MC, they say 700 cities, pay this at the bank, go here, you don't have it, you wait. You can do it at, you can do it at your own pace, but we want you to do it faster. I'm sure you've heard a rumor. Starting April 2023, the pattern of NCLEX question is gonna change. NCLEX is very objective. Click and drag, select other, apply, this and that, but it's likely gonna be subjective. And NCLEX is the CAT, computer-based test. You're gonna be typing. So if you're not good at typing like myself, 
and you go into that booth by yourself with a headphone glass. You can't talk to any human being. You are just straightforward. There are cameras rolling over you. I'm not exaggerating. That's how they look in the endless room. And you are now looking for Q and T on the keyboard. By the time you finish typing, answering one case study, the computer will shut down on you. So if you have the time to write it between today, June 19th, all the way to April 2023, that'll be good for you. So just a little head start. So just get the money for every stage until you get through. When you pass the NCLEX, the recruiters rush for you, you become a hot kick. You become a hot babe, they all want you. So one is gonna come with, I'll give you a car, I'll give you $40, I'll give you sign up bonus of 5,000. Then you have the beginning power. You decide who you want to go with because of the offer they're giving you. Because you already have NCLEX. That is why I always encourage people to do self-sponsorship. You pay as you go from your own pocket. When you enroll with OGP, already Pipe now, Evans, and they pay some things for you and they bring it to the US. And they don't give you direct hire, which normally they don't. And direct hire means that they are giving it to the hospital and you are a staff of that hospital for the rest of your life. Not for the rest of your life, but you are now with the hospital. You are not part of their business. You are lucky. But most of them do. If they invest in you, they don't do direct hire. Though some do. Majority don't. That means you sign a contract to work with them for two to three years. So when I am a staff, you come to my hospital, where they are paying me something like $40 an hour, and you came from Ghana through Avant, they might pay you like $26 an hour for the next three years of your life. That is if you don't, if you don't have the money and you want to go with the agency. It's better than sitting at home doing nothing. So if you can't pay yourself, you can go with the agency, but those are the pros and cons. And the recruiters will always bring your family, your spouse, your husband, wife, children. They would file for them but you will pay the filing fee, the plane tickets, the medicals, it's all your cup of tea to drink. You will pay that by yourself. But most of them will bring your family, whether we link it to a recruiter, whether you go with an agency, you will still be, your family will still be covered. So the US process is very lengthy, very expensive, very stressful, but people have done it and you can do it. So decide if you want to do this. You can do it as an individual. You can do it on your own without coming to us. People have done it with that on their own without coming to us. But we will make it faster for you because we know what the credential evaluation service are looking for. Some of you, these are country and this, the, 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 the CGFNS tool that they use to uh, evaluate your transcripts is under a big umbrella. They don't break it down. They make it look like you, did, you never did anything, general nursing, medicine, surgery. They don't have anything like that. And while you did the university and all that, you did general nursing, you went for clinicals and all, but CGFNS doesn't have time to break it down for you. But ERES will break it down a little bit. And we know the courses that you present and how they would um, we'll use it to work for you. So when you pay the $50 with us, before you get to the point of taking the end class, you would have paid the rest of the 250 People always ask, the 50 is part of the 300. So with 50 is commitment non-refundable. The 250 you pay before you even get to that point of writing NCLEX. So when you want to write NCLEX, you are in Africa, South Africa, as we said. We have a, we have a travel and tech company that would organize you, everything for you. They'll get your visa and all. You can sit at your home and just send them their, your passport and they'll come back to you with the visa in it. They take you there. Your hotel is already pre-booked. The hotel comes with breakfast, lunch and dinner is on yourself. You can choose to starve or can take Gary and Shito over there and go, and go and be eating. You can choose to do a tour of Johannesburg. Few days see your exams. So you can choose to do a tour of Johannesburg a day after your exams. So maximum five days you'll be in South Africa. If you want to write the exams and leave that day or the next day, you can do that as well. But normally, because of a little bit time difference, I think from Ghana to there is two hours time difference. Some people get jet lagged. So you want to go and relax and adjust your body to the time change before you go and write the NCLEX. There'll be a car waiting for you in front of your hotel, carrying you from your hotel straight to the exam center. When you're done, the, the bus will pick you up again back to your hotel room and the tour starts. If you don't want the tour, you go to the airport and you come to Ghana, Kenya, Tanzania, Namibia, whatever. Then in 48 hours, the result comes out. The result is online. You can check online to see whether you passed. But if you do not have to wait, this is off camera. You do not have to wait the entire 48 hours. There's a, way we, there's a trick we can do 
to check the results for you. Follow all the placement. There's a way we can do to check the results for you. So that is just the South Africa trip. Yeah, so if you're outside and your country is giving you stress, I don't know, I will, I will look into it and see how, Kola will please mute. Want to mute him, but will she share? Okay. And if uh, you are around and uh, we can see what our travel and tour company can do. If you have to work it through Ghana to be able to get your visa from the Ghana office before going, we'll speak to the travel and tour company and see what they can do for you. Yes, so the paperwork is a bigger chunk of the journey. The entrance is another one, and moving to America is the third part of the journey. Dixon, Francis, over to you. I've spoken a lot. <laughs> um, all that I will say is that this platform is created purposely to, you know, move from the traditional way of doing things. You know, this recruitment agency has created a lot of, you know, um, a huge requirement for African nurses and you know, you know we are not getting all this you know shaming from you know this um, recruitment agency. So we will make this process very simple for you. You do your self sponsorship. We will guide you every step of the way. Once you pass your NCLEX exams. You become very competitive. They will reimburse you with, with some of the cost, or you go with a direct high option. So each of the of the uh, um, approach will come with sponsorship. Of course, you have the opportunity to travel with your spouse if you are married, and if you have kids, you can travel with them. Children that are below the age of twenty-one. You have the opportunity to travel with them and you'll be given EB3 visa, which is a green card, employment-based visa, which is a green card. So um, I will encourage everyone to take advantage of this opportunity, provided you are a general nurse, a certified nurse in your home country. Does US accept IELTS for overseas students? or only standard IELTS. Oh, so the lady is here in the US. She did U um, IELTS academics and the board accepted it for her. So they can accept your academic IELTS. Good. Is it UWorld or ACHA? UWorld, UWorld QBank. We don't use ACHA, but if you want ACHA, we can buy it for you. You can show you how to get it. Uh, it does, yeah. yeah. Not, not too long, you, you drop a video on YouTube talking about um, worldwide egg solution stuff. I don't know if you remember, yeah. So I, I've been trying to follow a certain advert by that same you know, organization, and uh, of which I did, I applied for the nurse age, nurse aid uh, job. But in my resumes, which I can actually send to you if you want to see it, in my resumes, they, they saw you know, some of the you know, um, uh, area in which I work, med surgery and dialysis. And uh, they had to like send me a message that, sorry, I want to make it fast. They had to send me a message that uh, there's an uh, organization looking for a dialysis nurse. So I had to quickly reply that, you know, I mean, I'm a registered and a registered psychiatric nurse that I'm not a dialysis nurse. I only had basic training that am I also qualified? They say, yes, I'm qualified. And some document were sent to me and everything. You know, they have several agency under the uh, uh, worldwide solution. And I see those documents, they, they start updating me and everything. And before you know it, an interview date was set for me on Zoom. I was asked to download Zoom. So I had a Zoom interview with some, you know, cluster of white uh, ladies. I think maybe guys were among them. They had a meeting, they, they, they interviewed me, asked me some questions and everything. And uh, they told me that the results will be held later. And I think this, the later in the evening or the second day, the results came out that, you know, I was actually successful and they, they gave me an offer letter. They gave me an offer letter stating the conditions. I was asked to read through it and sign. And I did the signature and, you know, had to send. But my worry is that I don't have enclaves. You can have to quickly type to one of the, my uh, uh, facilitator that I've not done, I'm not a dialysis and they said I'm qualified, but I don't have enclaves. And in the DC, they say that enclaves passer or non enclaves passer can apply provided you choose to work in on your ankles in 12 months and all these things. They didn't actually say passing your ankles. So it's 
has actually been a worry to me that's I don't know. So I just want a bit of guide in it. They even gave me the states. That's a, um, uh, a state in New York. And is this worldwide X solution? So I don't know. And they were actually congratulating me, sending me an update and everything. The whole thing, the whole information looks so guided. And uh, uh, because today is Sunday, so maybe as from tomorrow, they may start coming up with some information. Is the worldwide X solution thing? So I don't know, but I've not done any class. And they said, is it direct IR with EB3 visa that covers me, uh, my family that have to pay for their medicals and all this thing, but everything about me. The payment is hourly payment of uh, $27 or something that will have to be a bond for three years. They give the whole condition that I have to sign that agree to those conditions. Okay. But my my fear is that I have not done any class. Yeah, that I have a question, okay. so. Yeah, we had a chat a few days ago. I'm sure it's about five or a week ago. We had a chat. So, yes, yes. You, you, you have no worry, actually. All I want to say is congratulations. You have no worry at all. They, um, I would chat you back. I will get their name. I would um, look up and see what they are up to. I just want to make sure they are legit. But that sends me back to that, um, that post I did. I had a regret putting out that video because lots of people kept testing me as if I work at Worldwide Solutions. I do not work at Worldwide Health Staff Solutions. I saw the advertisement, I called the company up and they said, yes, I did a voice recording. My team members have the recording because any research I do, I send the recording to them. So I, I have two phones. So anytime I'm calling, well, anytime I find something, when I make a phone call, I put this one together and I record and I sent to my team members. So I asked the woman, Do you, are you hiring from CNA, nursing assistant? They said, yes. A week later, I called again, pretending to be somebody else. They said, yes. Then I told her I have a YouTube channel. She took down all my profile and uh, she was very glad. Oh, you're gonna find us people and stuff like that. Anyway, that job is very legit. But they said they are hiring CNAs, nursing assistants to come to the US and they prefer those who have nursing license. That was what she said on the phone. But I think everybody in Africa applied for that job, literally. So they raised the standard and now say they want nurses that have bachelor's degree, BSN or BSc or BNSC as we call it in Nigeria. So they've hired people, that job I posted, they've hired people, but they have hired nurses who have degree to come and work in the US as CNA, as nursing assistants, provided they will work on their endless. So your question, just to clarify that, yes, that job was legit, people had a job, but those who had it were nurses who are willing to come and do CNA, nursing assistants, and they have degree, yes. So you don't have any worry. You specifically told them you don't have endless, and they still hired you, so you are good to go. In that 12 months, all you have to do is work on the endless. That is why it is best for you to start your endless process whilst you are in Nigeria right away today. So that by the time you enter America, maybe five months, six months later, you would have been able to take your endless. You will write it in America, but you need to start studying now and start your paperwork, your credential evaluation things now. When you want to wait till you get to America to start, it took me two years doing it from America. It's a little bit faster now because my I had little hitches. But they know you don't have NCLEX and they accepted you. So you should jubilate. Yeah, yeah. I'm calling you from Kenya. Okay. Hello. I can hear you. Yes, I, I want to, yes, I wanted to know whether in case somebody is interested in travel nursing, you can also help with that after somebody has passed the NCLEX. You want to work as a travel nurse. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yes. 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 You can work as a travel nurse, but trust me, believe me, you want to be at one place for the at least one year of your American nursing, because American nursing is entirely different from what you do in Kenya, Tanzania, wherever. You want to be at one place, one place, and do bedside nursing for one year. Even one year is for an extremely smart student, because when they carry you and dump you somewhere to work as a travel nurse, you will go home with depression. You would not know where to start from. And the nurses are gonna gossip about you. She's from Africa, she doesn't know anything. And what is she doing here? 
So I advise you to spend at least one year. The travel nurses, their requirement is one year bedside. You have never worked in America before. You don't know how to use the Maximo. You have not even seen it before. So things like that, you want to work in one place for at least one year before you become a travel nurse. Travel nursing is where the money is. And as if you do self-sponsor, you can go and move anywhere. But if you go through the agencies, Avant, OGP, Adevia, Insta stuff, for three years, you are at one place, you cannot go and do travel nursing. But travel nursing is where the money is, but you need to be up at a bedside and have one year. They want 12 months experience because American nursing is very different. It's all gadgets. And the documentation, they use the software called Epic. The documentation alone, it's, you need to learn it for at least a year. I'm not scaring you. Any questions, please? Yeah, hey, you. I think in the initial video when you were talking about uh, the CGFNS slash the ARS and uh, evaluation and process, you were actually uh, uh, suggesting that people that, that have um, psych that the psychiatric nurses should do the ARS uh, screening and then the higher end should do the general nursing should go for more of the CGFNS. That does eyes on that the ARS may not do a total screen of what. One has uh, evaluated it, uh, the totality of one, one, one has done is, uh, in his psychiatric studies. But here in Nigeria, like what I have, I mean, I did general nursing. That's what I, what I started with. I did a three year program, a diploma program. Then I now did a specialty, which is also, also most people do. But my specialty is in psychiatry. So I'm not confused. But in the Lancet, I only given only one Lancet. So the two uh, uh, qualifications is compressed in that Lancet. The back, you see, iron. At the front, you see the, the psychiatric nursing team. So, what do I do? Is this the giveness I'm using because I'm, I mean, I did general nursing, or is it the ERS I'm supposed to use because I also have a psychiatric nursing, or can I choose one? But it's only one nonsense that carry both qualifications. So, please, I would, I would like to be guided. So, that's what I'm asking. You use ERS. Dixon, can you please take that for us? You use ERS. You don't want to use. ERS. Yeah, so, so I want to be, I want to be clear with you. So, um, if you are psychiatric nursing um, diploma degree, is it a post basic? Post basic. Post basic. Yes. You did your general nursing before yes. doing specializing in in psychiatry. Right. Nurse, yes. you you did once you started with a general nursing. We can go ahead and use CGFN, but alternatively, we can use ERES because the reason why we also advocate for ERES is that. Uh, of course, they've been mandated to do uh, nursing credentials and in, in the U.S. and all that. But for them, their approach is quite different because they do what we call course by course evaluation. So one of the documents that you even the, your school has to even submit to them is your course description. They do what we call course by course evaluation. So they will analyze every course on your transcript. More importantly, the ones that are related to your nursing education. So, of course, in, in, in Ghana, um, if you went to University of Ghana, we call something a, a university a requirement course, African studies and courses that are not related to your nursing education. Those ones are exempted. Those ones, it's not of an interest to them. But the ones that are related to your nursing education, i.e. medical, surgical nursing, psychiatric nursing, they will do what we call course by course evaluation. And that one, they are able to do it to match that of the, the, the US you know, standard. You see, uh, in America, psychiatric and midwifery and all that are after your first degree. So after your, your RN, after having a general education in, in nursing, then you, you specialize. Unfortunately, unfortunately, in Africa, in some parts of Africa, uh, these specialties are done immediately, you know, once you have your, your WASI or SSE, you can go into this specialty. But in America, it's quite different. But for, for EIES, they emphasize on the courses on your transcript. So they do what we call course by course evaluation and they are able to do it to match that of the US system. So for, provided you did your general nursing before doing the psychiatric CGFNS or ERES, you are good to go, my brother, over. If you haven't joined our Telegram group, 
or our Facebook group, USRM Pathway Consult. It's, um, find us on Facebook. Hi, Prissy. Yes, Isaac, I can see you. What's up? <laughs> cool, cool. I just want to thank you for the good work that you're doing for uh, a thank lot of you. us. We are, we are really benefiting from your videos. They are very, very informative. God bless you for your hard work. Okay, that is all I want to say. Oh, that's nice of you. Thank you. And um, we are one of five, so we'll definitely catch up back door. Any yeah. questions? Anybody who is in doubt? What are you afraid to? It's long. What do you want to do? Do you want to go to uh, Esther? Do you have a question? Hello. Hi, Esther. Um, I did a uh, health assistant and I've graded to do B um, degree. So which of the certificates are they going to use? What did you study when you Hello. did your, What did you study when you did your degree? Um general nursing. That's perfect. That general nursing, I read. Yes, that's exactly what you need. That and that's what you're gonna use. But with the general nursing, I started from level two hundred. So and the health assistant was a two years program. It doesn't matter. Do you have a certificate that says that you have a degree in general nursing? Yes, I have it. I have my set. I have my team. I have everything. Dixon, go for it. So, so, yeah, so with your health assistant, is it clinical? You know, the health assistant, the rudeness, if you have, but it's is it clinical? clinical? House. Health assistant clinical. Yeah, so. So you it's see, clinical. The, the, 